Hi guys, Marcia here with Kichi B Style, and I'm so excited to share with you my second installment of Know Me Patterns. It's my early spring pattern, and this is a cool, edgy take on your classic wrap dress. Now this is an A-line dress, and it comes with two views. View A features a color contrast look with fluttered sleeves and a longer length, and view B is featuring a shorter sleeve version with a shorter length. Now I like to present my patterns with customizable options. These come with four cargo pockets, a wrap belt, um, but you can choose how many pockets you like. And I've actually, for my sew along today, I'm gonna be showing you how I created this look, which is sleeveless and has a longer length. And it's also color blocked. And I've done a little customizable color blocking here. So if you're ready, grab your pattern and your fabric and let's get into it. So when I originally created this look for my early spring know me pattern, I immediately knew that I wanted to do a multicolored color block look. For this pattern, you're only required to have two contrasting fabrics for view A. And I will be using um, a khaki cotton twill and a army green cotton twill for these main two colors. However, I have added three additional colors. You can follow along with the pattern with two contrasting fabrics, or you can add a couple more for this additional option. For this view, I'll be cutting view A. I will omit the sleeve and keep the longer hemline. You can always refer to the back of your pattern for fabric suggestions, size and measurements, and fabric yardage. If this is your first time sewing, don't forget to review your pattern instructions for more info on pattern markings and suggested cutting layouts. Okay, so this early spring pattern, it has a couple more pieces than my fall pattern did. Um, I believe there are 16 pieces to cut, and um, some of those will also be cut in the contrast. So let's get to it. For view A, you will need to cut piece one, bodice front, cut one of your fabric and one of your contrast fabric. Next, you will cut piece two, your upper pocket, cut two. You will need piece three, the upper pocket gusset, cut two. Cut piece four, your upper flap, cut two of contrast fabric and two of interfacing. Next, cut piece five, the boat is back, cut one of fabric and one of contrast fabric. You will need piece six, your skirt front, cut one of fabric and one of contrast fabric. I'll be cutting the longer length in view A. You'll also need piece seven, the skirt back, cut one of fabric and one of contrast fabric. Cut piece eight, the lower pocket, cut two of your contrasting fabric. You will need piece nine, your lower pocket gusset, cut two of your contrasting fabric. Cut piece 10, the lower flap, cut two of your contrasting and two of your interfacing. You will need piece 11, the upper collar, cut one of fabric and one of contrasting fabric, two of interfacing. You will need to cut piece 12, the under collar, cut one of fabric and one of contrast fabric. You will need piece 13, your front facing, cut one of fabric, one of contrast fabric, and two of interfacing. Next, cut piece 14, the epaulettes, cut two of your contrasting fabric and two interfacing. Lastly, you'll need piece 16 for your belt, cut two of your contrasting fabric and two of interfacing. Starting with your bodice front, first we'll reinforce the inner corner of the bodice front for about an inch on each side of the small dot, stitching through the dot. I finished my stitching so I went ahead and clipped to the dot and stay stitched my neck edge. Now I'm ready to create my bodice dart. With the right sides together, I bring the broken lines in the dots together to form my dart. Once you secure your dart with pins, then you can take it to your machine and stitch it up. You're going to want to give your darts a quick press away from the center. Now we can set our bodice aside and work on our pockets. I like to make my pockets all together, so I'll be explaining the construction of the cargo pocket only once. With wrong sides together, fold upper or lower pocket, whichever you're working on, in half crosswise, matching the notches. Then we're going to stitch along the broken line and press the pleat flat with our iron.
space across the raw edges of our pockets. Now let's grab our pocket gussets. We're going to reinforce the edges of our pocket gussets at the small dot stitching along the seam line. Then we'll clip to the stitching at the dot, being careful not to clip through the stitching. Repeat this for your upper pocket gussets and your lower pocket gussets. Now with right sides together and raw edges even, pin your gusset to your pocket matching the small dots. Do this for your upper pockets and your lower pockets. When you're finished pinning or clipping your gusset to your pocket, we are going to take this to our machine and we're going to stitch, pivoting with our needle in fabric at the corners. Do this for both your upper pocket and your lower pocket. Now we need to trim the corners and seams of our pockets, getting rid of any excess fabric and bulk. Do this for all four pockets. In order to prepare our pockets to be stitched to our garment, we want to make sure that our seams and our corners are flat as possible. You can use your pressing tool or your iron to flatten out your edges. First, I'm going to turn my upper edge to the outside along the fold line, forming the facing. I've pinned the facing down just to keep it secure. Now I'm going to take it to my ironing board and give it a press. Now I'm going to press under a fourth of an inch on the upper edge of the pocket facing and give it a press. Once this is done, take it to the machine and stitch your pinned edges. Now we're grabbing our bodice front and on the outside we'll pin the gusset to the bodice front along the placement line matching the small and large dot markings that we transferred when we cut out our pattern pieces. Once it's pinned then we'll take it to the machine so we can stitch it. We're going to stitch close to the side and lower edges and then press the gusset edges together. Once you've stitched your pocket to your bodice Pin the upper side edges of the pocket to the upper inner edges of the gusset. Now let's head back to the machine to stitch a fourth of an inch from the upper edge of the pocket. To create the pocket flap, take your interfaced piece four, which is your upper flap, fold it in half along the fold line with right sides together, pin or clip, then take it to your machine and stitch the sides. Once your flap is stitched, don't forget to trim the seams. And then we're going to turn the flap right side out and give it a press. I like to use my seam creaser for this. It's really good at getting corners and points and achieving a really clean edge. Next, I'm going to give the flap a press and baste the raw edges together. I went ahead and created my buttonholes at the markings on the flap also and finished my edges. Now on the outside of the bodice, I'm going to pin the flap to the bodice front with basting along the placement line. First, I'm going to pin it in place, matching the small dots. And then I'll take it to the machine and stitch along the basting. Go ahead and press your flap down and top stitch a fourth from the upper edge. Now let's take our back bodice pieces, which is your piece number five. You should have two of these, one in your main color and one in your contrast. You can finish your center back seams prior to stitching or after you stitch the center seam. We're gonna pin this back seam together and after we've pinned it together, we'll take it to our machine and give it a stitch. 
After you've stitched your back seam, press the seam out and stay stitch the neck edge. Now we're going to stitch our bodice front to our bodice back with right sides facing. Pin your back shoulder to your front shoulder and your side edges together using pins or clips. And let's not forget to match our notches and our dots. Once it's pinned, take it to your machine and stitch your seams. Now let's set your bodice aside. Next we're moving to our skirt. We're going to stay stitched the upper edge of our skirt front, P6. We'll also need to grab our skirt back, which is P7. We're going to stay stitch the upper edge of the skirt back also. Once your skirt back has been stay stitched, we are going to stitch the center back seam together. First, matching notches and dots with front sides facing, we are going to pin or clip the center seam edges together. Next, we will take our skirt backs to our machine and stitch the center back seam. Now we are ready to stitch our skirt front to our skirt back. With right sides facing and notches and dots matching, pin your skirt front to your skirt back at the side edges. Then take it to your machine and stitch. Go ahead and finish your seams if you haven't already and press them open and grab your bodice. With right sides together and raw edges even, we're going to pin the skirt to the bodice at the waist edge, matching the seams and notches. Now you can take it to the machine and stitch it. Before we move on, you need to press your seam towards your bodice. Now we'll be working on our lower pockets. For this pattern, your upper pockets and your lower pockets are constructed in the same way. So for lower pocket construction, please refer to the upper pocket instructions shared earlier in the video. Now on the outside of the dress skirt, where you should have transferred all your markings and your dots, we are going to pin the gusset to the skirt along the placement line, matching those small and large dots. just as you did with your upper pockets. Once your pocket is securely pinned in place, you can take it to the machine and stitch it close to the side and lower edges. I went ahead and gave my pocket a press and pressed those gusset edges together. Now I'm gonna pin the upper side edges of my pocket to the upper inner edge of my gusset. And just as we did with our upper pockets, I'll stitch a fourth of an inch from the upper edge of the pocket. If you haven't already, go ahead and finish your lower flap in the same way that we did our upper flap previously in the sew along. On the outside, pin your flap to the bodice front with basting along the placement line and match your small dots. I'm gonna go ahead and take this to machine and stitch it along the basting. I'll also turn the flap down, press, and top stitch it a fourth from the upper edge as I did with my upper flap. 
Now let's get into our collar. We're going to take our under collar section 12 and pin the center seams together. You can go ahead and finish your edges prior to stitching or after. Press your center seam out and flat. Grab your bodice. We're going to pin our under collar to our neck edge, clipping the bodice neck edge wherever necessary. Don't forget to match up any dots, notches, and seams. Now take it to your machine and stitch between the large dots, pivoting at the small dots. Now it's time to trim the edges and get rid of some bulk. I will be clipping and cutting the corners as close as I can, making sure not to cut any stitching. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab our front facing piece number 13. I've reinforced the inner corner and stay stitched my neck, clipping to the stitching at the dot. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish my unnotched edge. So let's go ahead and grab our upper collar, which should already be interfaced with right sides together. We're going to pin our upper collar together at the center back seam. Be sure to match your notches and dots. We're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch these two sections together. You will also need to machine stitch a half an inch from the single notched edge of the upper collar between the inner small dots. Clip to the stitching at the dots and you're going to press under a half an inch on the raw edge between these clips. Next, grab your facing and we're going to pin the upper collar to the neck edge of these facing sections. Make sure that you're matching the large dots and the inner small dots and pivoting at the corners. After you finish pinning or clipping, you can take it to the machine and give it a stitch. Now we'll need our finished upper collar and facing and our under collar and bodice. And we're going to take both pieces with right sides together and pin the upper collar and the facing to the under collar and dress. Matching center seams, notches, and dots. Pin your under collar and upper collar together. When you're done pinning, go ahead and stitch your collar edges to the small dot. Now we're ready to pin and stitch the front opening and lapel edges to the large dots. Pin the remaining lapel and facing all the way down to the hem, stopping at the large dots. Let's take it to the machine and finish stitching up the front lapel and the opening. Now you can go in and trim the edges and clip your corners, making sure to get rid of any excess bulk. 
This way you can create nice clean edges and a smooth finish. Now let's give our upper collar and our facing a good press. We're gonna turn our upper collar and facing to the inside and pin the pressed edge of the collar over the seam. When you're done, we'll go to the machine and stitch in a ditch of the seam. Catch an end pressed edge of the upper collar on the inside. Next, you will lift your facing and sew the notched neck edge of the facing to the dress between the large and small dots. Now I'm going to go ahead and stitch the shoulder edge of the facing to the shoulder seam allowance of the dress. Now let's get into the epaulettes. With piece number 14, which is your epaulette pattern piece, we're going to fold it along the fold line with the right sides together and pin or clip. And then we'll take it to the machine and stitch it, leaving the end with the small dot open. Once you're finished stitching, we're going to trim the corners and turn our epaulettes. You can use whatever turning method is comfortable for you. I will be using my loop turner for this method. I like to use my favorite seam pressing tool to get the corners and the edges and I'll give it a press. You can complete this for both of your epaulettes and I'll also go ahead and baste the open edge and create the buttonhole at the markings of the epaulettes. After the epaulettes are completed, we can go ahead and pin the epaulettes to the dress at the shoulder seam with raw edges even and any notches or dots matching. Now let's take it to the machine and baste it in place. For my armhole, I'll be using the sleeveless method from view B for my sew along today. I'll be creating my own bias tape using my one inch bias tape maker for this sew along today, but you can also purchase bias tape if you like. Now let's grab your armhole and your bias tape. We're gonna open out one edge of the single fold bias tape and with right sides together, pin the tape to the armhole edge, having the raw edges even. Pin a clip the bias tape to the edge of the armhole until you get to the other end and overlap about a fourth of an inch and cut the bias tape. 
Once you've completed pinning both arms, we'll take this to the machine and stitch in 3 eighths of an inch and trim our seams. Don't forget to clip the curves as you're trimming. Now let's turn under the open edge of our bias tape, catching in the seams of the armhole and pin. Now let's head to our sewing machine so we can finish off our armholes by under stitching the tape and top stitching close to the inner edge of the tape. Now let's take piece number 16, your tie belt, and create our belt. With right sides facing, we're going to stitch the notched ends of the belt together and pin it. Then take it to your machine and stitch your seam. Now with right sides facing, we're going to fold the belt in half, lengthwise matching the seams and any notches. We're going to pin it and then we'll take it to the machine and stitch it. So I went ahead and trimmed my corners and edges, turned my belt and gave it a press. And now we need to slip stitch the opening edges together. But first I like to add a little stitch and tape to secure the edges before I go in to slip stitch. Once you finish your belt, you can go ahead and make your buttonholes in the right and left dress front at the markings and sew on your buttons. All that's left is your hem and your piece is complete. I absolutely love the way this turned out. It is so versatile. I even added a coordinating bustier and the removable sleeves. For more information in the deets on how I created these additional pieces, don't forget to subscribe at Kichi B Style. Peace.